Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. This is a Vault exclusive, hence the Vault exclusive t-shirt. It's actually from the Vault exclusive t-shirt collection. I have to do this video though because I've had so many people respond to another video I put up on my main channel. It's an old video. But for some odd reason, there's some people out there who just want to argue. They just want to argue. And I'm getting really tired of people arguing about this one particular point. And the interesting thing is, I got so sick of people arguing, I actually shut the comments off on the video. I'm pretty sure I did. And somebody today went on to another video of mine and said, Steve, on this other video you said, and they complained about a video several years old, and they raised the same complaint that everyone else who wants to argue raises. And here you have to understand something. I've mentioned before that many of the contrarians in the audience will often respond contrarily to something I say as an aside. In other words, I'm trying to explain something to you here, and somebody goes, what about over here? And come on, I'm, I'm, I'm just using examples off the top of my head. As you may have guessed, I don't have a script, okay? So here's what happened. I did a video a long time ago. I was trying to explain the concept of plain view. So if a police officer, for instance, pulls you over, walks up to your car, and you've got something laying in the back seat, and it's broad daylight out, and he can see it in your back seat, okay, with his own eyes. He doesn't need a warrant to look at it. It's in plain view. The plain view doctrine says that if the police officer is legally where he is without a warrant, he doesn't need a warrant to use his eyes while he's there. So the example I gave, and this was just a throwaway example. I said, if there's a police officer on the porch of a house, and he looks in the window and sees a machine gun, and he sees it with his own eyes, and says, hey, what's the deal with that machine gun? Well, he saw it with his own eyes. He doesn't need a search warrant to say that he saw that, okay? I had, I'm guessing, several hundred people say everything from how do you know it's a machine gun you can't identify that by simply looking at it through a window to is he an atf agent is he even authorized to ask about the tax stamp that would allow someone to own a machine gun by the way you know not all machine guns are illegal and people are going on and on and on arguing with that as opposed to saying oh steve i understand what it is that you're saying about plain view now you might be saying but steve if you use an example that contains bad facts, then you have to understand that people will argue with you. So if I, if I said, for example, you walk to the moon, okay? And while you're walking to the moon, you see something. You go, Steve, you can't walk to the moon. It's 200 and some odd thousand miles away, and it's actually separated from Earth by nothing you can walk on, right? So when you say that the cop looks through the window and sees a machine gun, you can see why. No, no, you can't. Okay. And here's the deal why. I mentioned that I've taught law school for 10 years and I would give a question on an exam and I would have students actually circle parts of the question and go, well, if this, and they'd want to change the facts. You can't change the facts of a hypothetical. So when I said the police officer's on the porch and he looks through the window and sees a machine gun, that's a fact in a hypothetical. And I'm telling you that he's a police officer on a porch. There's a window he can see through and there's a machine gun. Now you might say, what about Steve? Some, some windows are opaque. What if somebody spray painted the window black? He couldn't see through the window. What if the police officer was blind? He can't see that. What if the house had no porch? How do you answer that then, Mr. Leto? You don't raise those kind of points, do you? And so obviously these are people who've got a hair trigger uh, and they're reacting to the subject matter because they want everyone to understand how much they understand about that whole field and about how I don't understand it because I foolishly think a police officer can identify the manner in which the thing operates by looking through a window into a house. And that's not what I said. I said he looks through the window and he sees a machine gun. Now you might say, Steve, but those facts are so absurd. How could that ever possibly happen? Do you want more facts from my hypothetical? Okay, let's suppose that there is a World War II museum. And it is right there on the edge of town. And on display in the World War II Museum, they've got a German MG42, look it up, 
Uh, it's a gun you probably saw in Saving Private Ryan, if you saw the movie. I'd recommend that you do if you're a World War II guy. And uh, the MG42 is, in fact, a... I don't need to say it, do I? You know what it is. So, let's suppose they have a display, and they've got one of those on display in the museum. And the museum's a smaller museum. They have very, very poor security. So one day, a guy walks in, looks around, and goes, Hey, place has got no security. Check it out. There's an MG42. Just like in the movie Saving Private Ryan. Guy runs over, grabs it, picks it up, and starts running out. Just then, the senile old security guard sees the guy running and goes, Hey, hey, he's stealing a machine gun. And so the man carrying the machine gun runs out into the street, being chased by a security guard going, He's stealing our machine gun. And just then, they both run past a police officer who realizes, Hey, crime in progress. So the man carrying the stolen item from the museum runs into his own house, slams the door behind him, puts it on the coffee table, and then goes and hides in the back room. Police officer chases up onto the porch, looks through the window, which is transparent, and sees the machine gun that was just being carried by the man running, chased by a security guard saying, he stole our machine gun. And by the way, the police officer works part-time as a volunteer at the museum where it explains to people what the MG42 is. Okay? Those are the facts I left out of the hypothetical. So, police officer is standing on the porch, looks through the window and goes, oh, that's the machine gun that I just saw that guy carrying out of the museum, running, being chased by a man saying, he stole our machine gun. Oh, how could a police officer look through the window and identify that as a machine gun? Does he have a right to even ask if the person in the house has the tax stamp for it? No, it's stolen. It was the subject of a crime. The man in the house doesn't own it because he just stole it. And the police officer was hoping to find it and catch the guy who took it because there was a security guard yelling, he stole our machine gun. So the police officer's on the porch Okay, and he can see it inside the house and the facts develop such that they're in court later on, somewhere down the road. The man is on trial for theft and the police officer testifies and says, I saw the man go running by me, carrying it. I could see it plain as day because that's the same one I stand in front of and explain to tourists six days a week in my spare time. He ran into the house with it, slammed the door behind him. I saw him put it on the coffee table, and he ran and disappeared in the back of the house. So I can link that stolen item with that man there. Now he's over here because he's a defendant. And that's how I put that all together. And I saw it in the house on the coffee table through the clear window from the porch that existed. And that's how he knew it was a machine gun. There you go. Oh, you can't tell by looking at it. Oh, is he an ATF agent? Does a police officer even have the right to ask somebody about their lawfully owned machine gun? I didn't say it was lawfully owned. Any more than I said that the window was opaque. So the weird thing is, and I and I, <laughs> I know there's people out there who are just contrarians, who I can say anything and they'll argue with me. My point is that in the hypothetical, I gave you some basic facts to try to illustrate the idea of plain view. And oddly, no one argued with me about the concept of plain view. They argued with me about how it's impossible, impossible. There's no facts out there that could possibly explain how the police officer can know that that's a machine gun. And I just gave you the facts. Guess what? He could, because those are the facts. As the person making up the story, the hypothetical, or the fact pattern, as we call it in a law school exam, I get to make up the facts, okay? But you, as a student, if you want to consider yourself a student, don't get to make up facts or change facts and say things like, but if he lawfully owned that, you have no right to do anything about it. I never said he lawfully owned it, did I? And I also didn't say that the police officer deduced by looking at it that it was a machine gun. I said he looked in the window and said, hey, it's a machine gun. He knew it. Now, how did he know it? Well, I didn't think it was important when I'm explaining plain view because I'm not going to do a whole thing on the history 
of automatic firearms, okay, that's not the point of that hypothetical. The point was there was something on the table that the police officer wanted to see because it was part of his job. It very well could have been something else. It could have been anything. But if I'd said there's a bag of stolen money on the table, people go, how do you know it's stolen? You can't tell by looking at money if it's stolen. Well, if he's running down the street and people are yelling, hey, he just robbed the bank, and there's three bankers running after him and and several security guards running after him, and he's carrying a bag with dollar signs on it, and he keeps running and looking, and he's running, and he runs inside the house and slams the door and throws the bag on the table and goes and hides in the back room. Yeah, he can tell by looking at the bag that's stolen money. He can't even see into the bag. But people are yelling, hey, he just robbed the bank. He's got a bag of stolen money. Okay? And if I'd done that instead, no one would have complained. For some odd reason, people want to argue <laughs> about the nature of what it was on that table as if that mattered. And it didn't because the example was about plain view. So I think the video that I'm talking about has actually been up now for like three or four years. I forgot what the topic was. I don't even, I don't even know. I don't even know. But somebody commented today and said, Steve, in a previous video, you mentioned plain view. And you said that a police officer looking into a house saw a machine gun and asked, I think I just said hypothetically, hey, what's the deal with the machine gun? Uh, Is he an ATF agent? Because isn't only an ATF agent allowed to ask that question? What? (laughs) Really? (laughs) In your world, that's what happens? Okay, that's fine. You make up your facts, but I'll make up mine. Okay, so the point is, it was a hypothetical. And the hypothetical was that he knew what it was. Okay, why he knew? Well, that didn't matter to the story. But since you asked, I told you. There was a World War II museum. It was just robbed. And the guy was running down the street carrying it, chased by a senile old security guard going, he just stole our machine gun. Police officer saw all of that, gave chase, broad daylight. The man ran into the house, closed the door behind him, put it on the coffee table. And by the way, the police officer saw him put it on the coffee table. And he looked in the window, there it was. There you go. So, sorry that I had to do that. I'm going to put this on the vault, and from now on, whenever somebody asks me about that hypothetical, I can give them the link to this video. and go, there you go. That explains it. And no, in my fact pattern, he's not an ATF agent, because it wouldn't have to be an ATF agent to chase after somebody who stole something from a World War II museum in an imaginary place that I just made up. Okay? So there you go. There you go. There you go. Questions or comments, put them below. But like I said, it's my hypothetical. Don't make me make up more facts. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.